Hello my lovelies, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new and welcome to my May TBR Pong. So you guys know the drill by now, this is my TBR game in which I allow Beer Pong to choose my TBR for the month. I brought this TBR game back last month and you guys absolutely loved it. You wanted me to continue with it so that is what we are doing. As always I'm going to start with five throws which means five prompts and therefore five books on my TBR for the month. If I miss three shots in a row I then have to add another throw and so on and so on. So last month I'm pretty sure we ended up with seven throws altogether, so seven books on my TBR and I am pleased to report for the first time ever I think I have actually read all the books on my TBR for the month. Yes, I know. Who am I? That is not like me at all. You guys know I am a huge mood reader. I love to have a TBR for the month, but I very often do not stick to it. So this has been a very good month for me, but you'll find out all about that in next week's wrap up. This month, I only have two books that I definitely need to get on to my TBR, no matter how hard we have to twist those prompts. The first one is The X Hex by Erin Sterling. This is the May pick for my Patreon book club. So myself and my patrons will be reading this. I will be filming a spoilery reading vlog and we will be chatting about it in the discord as well so if you'd like to get involved in that my patreon is always linked down below and the second book I definitely need on to my TBR this month is The ABC Murders by Agatha Christie. I am buddy reading this one with Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin and Steph from Steph Loves so this one definitely needs to be popped on there as well. Aside from that I really don't have any ideas for what sort of books I want on my TBR for this month. Usually I'll have some idea of a few books that I really want to get on there any which way but this month I'm kind of just leaving it open to the universe. We'll see what prompts I get and we'll see what books we can fit into it. So without further ado, let's get into the first throw. Okay, first attempt at first throw. What? Okay, let's hope we are starting as we mean to go on here. For our first throw we have... Oh, coin toss. Alright guys, so the first throw went surprisingly well, but we got coin toss. So basically with this one, obviously, I toss a coin, which let me tell you, very difficult to find. Apparently none of my family ever use coins anymore. I have spent the last 10 minutes rifling through bags, coat pockets, drawers, anywhere I can think a coin might be. Poo bags? Everywhere. Coins? non-existent. I managed to find one. So basically I'm going to flip the coin. If it is heads I have to choose a book that is less than 200 pages. If it is tails I have to choose a book that is greater than 500 pages. So let's give it a go. I don't think I've like flipped a coin in a very long time. How do you even do this? It kind of flew away from me but it landed on tails. So that means I need to choose a book that is greater than 500 pages, of course. All right guys, that was <laughs> surprisingly difficult. I predominantly read, as you guys know, thriller and romance. So 500 page books are very hard to come by, but <coughs> I did manage to find The Little Friend by Donna Tarr. I have said before, I'd really like to read The Secret History before I read The Little Friend. So I may have to try and do that this month, but if not, I have got The Little Friend on my TBR. This one I am excited about. This was mainly a cover buy, I'm not gonna lie, just because of how creepy that cover is. I just love it. But I have heard some very mixed things since I bought it, so we shall see. In this one we follow 12 year old Harriet who is living in a family that are all still reeling and grieving from the death of her brother 12 years earlier. Her brother Robin went missing and died under very shocking and mysterious circumstances and Harriet feels like her family are never going to get over this. So she sets out with her friend to try and find the murderer and punish him. Obviously she is a 12 year old girl thinking she's going to go on this big adventure but actually get involved in some really dark stuff. What starts out as a child's game soon becomes a dark and dangerous journey into the menacing underworld of a small Mississippi town. So this one said it's going to be quite a gritty, dark, shocking read and yeah it's a long one with extremely small font so we'll see how that goes. Okay and um, we're just gonna switch it up for a new prompt and go with this one. Okay, first attempt at second throw. Second attempt at second throw. I hit my dog in the face. Can I have that bobo? Okay, final attempt at second throw. Okay. 
Okay, so it's happened again. I have missed three times in a row, which means we need to add on another throw. Great. Okay, first attempt at second throw. <laughs> Don't ask me how I did that when I couldn't do it last time. So, for our second prompt we have... Oh, booktube favourite. All right, guys, well, it couldn't continue for long, could it? So I did miss three times for my second throw, which means we need to add on another throw, which means we're going to be reading six books in total so far. But for my second attempt at the second throw, I managed to get it in one. Not really sure how that happened. Those two don't really match up, but we're going to go with it. So for this one, I got booktube favourite. So I'm going to use this one as an excuse to get in my Patreon book club pick, which is of course The X Hex by Erin Sterling. Everyone has been talking about this one recently. I've seen it all over BookTube, BookTok, Book Twitter, Bookstagram, all the bookish platforms. So I think that counts. This one follows Vivian, who goes through a very difficult breakup, gets drunk and puts a hex on her ex. But now, nine years later, her ex, Reese, is back in town and everything is going wrong. Everything he touches turns to disaster and the magic in the town also seems to be a little bit mixed up. So Vivian and Reese must put their differences aside and work together in order to break this curse. It just sounds like it's going to be such a cute and fun rom-com and of course I love anything witchy as well. So cannot wait to read this one with my patrons. And we're going to switch it up for our next prompt for this one. Okay, first attempt at third row. Okay, once again, I smashed it. So for our next prompt, we have, oh, literally the one I just put on there. LGBT rep. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on here, but apparently I got it in one again. So for this one, I got LGBTQIA plus rep. So since at the moment, Heartstopper is life and I need anything Alice Oseman I can possibly get, I'm going to use this as an excuse to finally read Loveless by Alice Oseman. This one I've had on my shelf for a long, long time. I've heard nothing but amazing things about it. So I think it's time I finally pick it up and see what all the fuss is about. In this one, we follow Georgia who goes to university never having had a romantic relationship, never having kissed anyone, never having had a crush of any sort. And then she starts to discover terms like asexual, and aromantic and goes on a journey to sort of finding her own identity and her own sexuality as well. A lot of people who are aromantic or asexual do say that this was very relatable to them and that it was written very well so I'm really looking forward to seeing some good representation. I've also never read anything about an asexual or aromantic individual so I think this will be really interesting for me as well to kind of educate myself a little bit. So yeah, really looking forward to having some more Alice Oseman in my life. So let's just find another prompt this one. Okay, first attempt at fourth throw. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm confused too, don't worry. So for our next prompt we have, oh, multiple POVs. Guys, I swear I'm not cheating. I swear, I don't know what's going on. Maybe like my little protein shake and hummus bagel just really set me up well for the day today. I don't know, but for our next one, we got multiple POVs. So this is gonna be an absolute shocker to everyone, but I have chosen to go with a Colleen Hoover. I know. Shocking. This one is November 9th, which I've had quite a few people tell me I need to read since I started doing my little Colleen Hoover vlogs. And this one I am so excited about. On my last video, someone actually commented saying that I should do a video seeing how many Colleen Hoover books I can read in 24 hours. So I think I'm probably gonna attempt that this month because I think it would be so much fun. And then I can include this one in it as well as Reminders of Him, Heartbones, Regretting You, I think. I think there's a few on Kindle Unlimited, plus I already own this one. So I think I'm gonna give that video will go at some point this month so if that's something you would be interested in then please do comment down below and let me know. This one kind of seems a little bit like One Day by David Nichols which I've not read but I have heard about. We basically follow Fallon and Ben who meet the day before she is scheduled to move across the country and then over time amidst various relationships, tribulations of their own separate lives, they continue to meet on the same date every year until one day Fallon becomes unsure if Ben has been telling her the truth or fabricating a perfect 
alternate reality for the sake of the ultimate plot twist. Can Ben's relationship with Fallon and simultaneously his novel be considered a love story if it ends in heartbreak? Okay, that's the first time I've read the blurb and now I'm even more excited. This one sounds so good. I love that sort of like passing romance like that. I can't remember what the trope is called. And also anything that has to do with writing inside a novel, I always find really interesting to see how that is done because it can make for a very twisty book. So very excited for that one. And once again, we are gonna switch it up for, let's go, this one. Okay, first attempt at a fifth, and what should be final throw? I mean, I'm happy, but I'm confused. So for our next prompt, we have, um, Feel like you have already read it. Am I good now? This is not what TBR Pong is usually about, I promise. Like if you are new here, usually it's a lot more entertaining. Usually I miss a lot and get really angry at the balls and the cups. But apparently today, I'm good. So for my fifth prompt, I got feel like you have already read it. So for this one, I'm gonna have a few people who are very, very happy with me to be finally picking up this book. I'm looking at you, Maddie and Christy. I've been begged to read this book for such a long time and that is Docile by KM Sparrow. Yes, it is finally time. This book has gotten five stars from so many of my friends. I've had so many people tell me I need to read it ASAP. People who really understand my reading taste as well. So I do look at this one as a five star prediction. Always scary to say. But this one is set in like a dystopian world, I believe, where people who have inherited debt from their families or who have debt of their own, they can become a docile, which means they are auctioned off and they can repay the money they owe through labour or through selling themselves in some way. So that could be like work, it could be as like a servant or a slave, or it could be for their body. And we follow Alicia, whose family has been ruined by debt handed down to them from previous generations. And he decides to try to raise his family debt himself, but he swears he will never take the drug Dosaline, which is a drug that you can be given so that you don't remember what it was you did while you were trying to repay this debt, I believe, but it can have all sorts of consequences and can really just like mess you up as a person, I believe. So he vows he will not take it, he will just struggle through this time as a docile. However, his contract actually ends up being with the man who created this drug, I believe, or his family created the drug. And this man, Alex, is determined to turn Alicia into the perfect docile without the drug. So so this one is definitely a very dark read. I think it's basically got every trigger warning imaginable, but it's supposed to be an incredible book and one that you just cannot put down. So I'm very excited to be finally reading it. And we're gonna switch it up, hopefully for the last time, for this one. First attempt at sixth and possibly final throw. attempt at a sixth and hopefully final row. What? I don't understand. You guys, when did I get so good at my TBR game? For our final prompts, apparently, we have... Mm. Second chance author. Guys, it's over. I'm not gonna lie, I'm in shock. I'm a little bit speechless. Like, I'm a little bit worried for next month because if it went this well this month, surely it's only downhill from here. So for my final throw, I got second chance author. And this one, people might be a little bit angry with me for saying, but I'm gonna choose Josh and Hazel's Guide to Dating not dating, Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren. Now I've only read one book by Christina Lauren before and that was The Unhoneymooners and I was a little bit disappointed, I'm not gonna lie. I enjoyed it, but it was only okay. Like I'm pretty sure I gave it three out of five stars. I didn't think it was anything special. I expected a lot more because of how much people rave about it. Part of me wonders if that was because of my mood at the time. Maybe, cause sometimes like if I'm in a bad mood or if I'm just not feeling my reading mojo, then I can not enjoy a book as much as I would at a different time. So that is why I want to give Christine Lauren 
a second chance because I've heard amazing things about her. People rave about her as a romance author, they rave about her books, her writing, so I feel it's only right I give her a second chance. The lovely Ashley actually gifted me this one for my birthday and I am really really looking forward to reading it. I think Steph from Steph Loves is actually the reason that I put this on my wish list in the first place. I'm sure she said this is one of like her favourite romances. And I do trust her opinion. So I'm hoping to love this one. So I think in this one, Josh and Hazel, I think they're kind of like in denial that they like each other. And they set each other up on double dates to try and help each other out. They've both had like disastrous relationships before, I think, or either non-existent. And they decide to help each other, set each other up on dates. So they're not dating each other, but they're dating other people. But it says, not that Josh and Hazel date, at least not each other, because setting each other up on progressively terrible double dates means there's nothing between them, right? This sounds so fun. It kind of reminds me of that episode of Friends where Phoebe and Joey set Rachel and Ross up on terrible dates to try and get them to get back together. It kind of gives me that sort of vibe, if you know what I mean. No, no, no. It kind of makes sense to me though. So yeah, I think this is going to be a really fun read. I think it'll be a really quick one as well. Hopefully it will redeem Christina Lauren in my eyes. So that is all my froze. Obviously I am going to have to add on a seventh book anyway because I do need to get the ABC Murders by Agatha Christie on this TBR. It's not going to be part of the game but I will be reading it this month anyway. Like I said this is a buddy read with Gavin and Steph. It's going to be my first Agatha Christie as well so I am looking forward to it. Obviously this one is a Poirot novel so we follow him trying to catch a murderer who I believe is killing people according to the alphabet. So I think he's killing people whose names start with like A and then B and then C and then D and then E. And then e. You know how the alphabet goes. I believe. I mean there's not a synopsis. <laughs> on the cover or on the inside of the cover so that's not helpful. I think it's something along those lines and I'm looking forward to reading it and I am looking forward to buddy reading it with Gavin and Steph. So there we have it. <laughs> that is Please don't fall. There we have it. Those are all of my books on my May TBR as chosen for me by my TBR Pong. I am really I don't know why I've got it this way. That's better. So these are all the books that I will be reading this month hopefully. Hopefully I can keep up my streak, my streak of one month of actually reading all the books on my TBR. Some of these I am really really excited for. I'm really excited for my Patreon pick. I'm excited to do my little Colleen Hoover reading vlog. Yeah hopefully it's gonna be a really good month. I realise now that there aren't really, I mean there's some darker books but there's not really like thrillers. Who am I? I mean we all know I'll read some thrillers anyway because I can't go a month without reading a thriller so. But yeah those are the books on my TBR for this month. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it wasn't as entertaining as my usual TBR Pong because apparently I'm a pro now. If you made it to the end of this video then pop the emoji down below for the utter confusion that is apparently I can play TBR Pong now. Pop that emoji down below just to let me know that you made it to the end of this video and that you enjoyed your time here. But as always if you did enjoy this video then do please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe for more bookish content from me. Comment down below with any of your thoughts and feelings. I do reply to every single comment. I love you all and I will see you in my next one.